Hey, I'm curious. Uh, the lawsuit is pretty clear on the intentions. It, it says, hey, look, and correct me if I miss it even just a little bit, but look, uh, and I'm just breaking it down. The EIR did not address our concerns, and the city and the athletics did not pay attention to our comments and concerns. That's what it says, right? Right. Yeah. In, in fact, there's a there's a, a rule of of construction in, in almost all of these challenges that says you have to have uh, um, exhausted all of your administrative remedies before you go to court, um, which is to say you can't just show up in court if you didn't participate in the process first. Um, and you can't just spring new stuff on the uh, public agency um, in court that you didn't at least try to have a conversation with them about first when you had the opportunity when they were spending all the time and energy on the report. Um, so th there's mutual obligations there between the public agency that's running the EIR, in this case, the project developer, which is the A's, and the public. Um, for you to step up when it's your turn uh, to get up to the mic or to write a letter and say, here are the things that I'm really worried about that I don't think you address properly. Um, or here are the things that we do think you address properly, um, but you didn't, you didn't quite hit, hit the mark on your response. So, um, you know, I, I, there's definitely a lot of, of places where um, we just feel at the end of the day um, that the answers that we got to those those issues we brought up were just not adequate. And I want to get something out of the way that was written on uh, on Ace Fan Network, and it's this idea that uh, this could be countersued because of the nature of this. This isn't a countersuit situation. You want to talk about that? So, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, I saw that too. Thanks for bringing that up. That yeah. Uh -huh. kind of, uh, you know, I mean, this is not civil litigation in the classic sense where there's two parties that are that are fighting over something. This is an, an administrative writ, which means it's a challenge to the government. Um, and you're asking the government to actually fulfill their legal obligations and their duties. So um, if a government agency doesn't perform the way they're supposed to, you can take them to court. If a government agency fails to do something that they're obligated to do, you can bring a writ, you can take them to court. Um, this is no different than that. So the A's are a named party because they're a party in interest because it's their project. Um, but the failure is is one of a public agency um and the question before a judge is did this city um do what they needed to do to fulfill all of their obligations and anyone can bring that suit um you know the standing bar which is you know the way that you talk about you know whether or not you have a legitimate ability to show up in court and assert your um, position that's standing um, is pretty low uh, because there's two ways to get into uh, a sequel uh, case in court. You're either an interested party who's commented because it impacts you in some way, shape or form, you're a stakeholder. That's one way to do it. Or you're asserting a public interest. Well, that's pretty much everything. Everything in the world is either a private interest or a public interest. Yeah. Yeah, um, and so you kind of have to state which one you are, but once you're there, you're there. Um, and but there's no such thing as a countersuit. Anyone in the public is actually more or less encouraged to participate in this process, right? I mean, it, there's a cattle call for projects. Anyone in the world can bring a comment on an environmental impact report, and it's encouraged to do so. That's the, the entire point of the requirement that you exhaust your administrative remedies. No surprises, but everyone hears everyone's input and then you address it. Um, and so everyone who's participated in this, this process um, had a, a right to be there. Um, and um, there were over 400 comments 
Um, obviously, there were a lot in, by fans in support of the project, and there were a lot of people who are detractors of the project. Any one of those people had the right to be there. Um, and a countersuit would essentially uh, imply that somehow you didn't have the right to raise a comment. Um, and frankly, that's just uh, either completely missing the point or it um, it's kind of just mean spirited. Yeah. It's I mean, kind of stupid because basically telling it's it's like just the side, it's, 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 how do I put it? It's a slap lawsuit gone wrong, that's, right? That's exactly what it is. So, a, you know, a slap is a strategic lawsuit against public participation, um, which is something that someone does to keep you from us being able to assert your legal rights in court. Um, and there are, as you probably know, there are a lot of cases of uh, successful anti-slap motions by people who are basically saying, I have a right to be here. Yep. Um, you can't take that away. Um, and uh, anti-slap um, is really important because it preserves people's access to court. And that means that it preserves their rights. Um, so yeah, I mean, you can't be, you can't be sued. There's no such thing as a countersuit in a CEQA case um, because the entire concept of it is to encourage the public to interact with the government so the government is informed. Um, and so our, our petition basically says we don't believe that the, the city properly certified the EIR, which means they haven't properly analyzed, they haven't properly established that baseline, their mitigation measures aren't appropriate, and they didn't include the right alternatives. That's it. And you can be right or wrong, but you have the right to assert it as long as you participated in that process and you felt like your input was not not well received. Okay, this update, folks. Here is where my friend Mike Jacob they found to be wrong, essentially. There are two cases, among others, that point to where sequel lawsuits were countersuit, but there's a catch. In the case of Jan Dunning versus Kevin Johnson and Clues Horse versus the city of San Diego. And in both of those cases, as referred to in the description to this video and the link to the news post where I found the information, the catch is that both of those sequel lawsuits were found to be meritless filed without any particular reason making them obviously nuisance lawsuits okay the difference between those lawsuits and the lawsuit that's filed by mike jacob on behalf of the oakland maritime businesses is that ab 734 bonta gives a clear directive regarding what the, where the challenge can be filed from a, stand, from a legal standpoint. And that goes back to the plaintiffs, Mike, which is rep, are represented by Mike Jacob, concern that their comments were left unaddressed by the city of Oakland and the Oakland Athletics, and that is for the court to determine. But AB 734 Bonta gives them a clear road toward the filing of a lawsuit, a sequel lawsuit that is with merit because all they can, all they have to say is, hey, look, our filing is under rules allowed by AB 734 Bonta, and we followed those rules, so our lawsuit is not meritless. So if the lawsuit is not meritless, then it can't be countersued. But if it's found by the court to be meritless, and the, which means the plaintiffs lose, well, it means more than the plaintiffs lose. The plaintiffs, the plaintiffs can lose on a lawsuit with merit. But if the court finds a lawsuit to be a meritless lawsuit, then yeah, a countersuit can be filed, but under those conditions. Subscribe to Zenny62 and bookmark oaklandnewsnow.com.